few more people join. Um, so your, the part of your friendly neighborhood syntax product person is going to be played by me today. Uh, syntax was double booked. Um, we're going to be talking in, in voice a little bit, and um, then we'll try and answer some questions in text as well. But uh, we've got Strawberry here today live streaming us. So that's cool. Thank you, Strawberry. Um, and yeah, so it, it's really hard to drive your mouse and uh, your keyboard and like crank the camera all at the same time. I mean, I get it. Are we, uh... yeah, thanks, Pantera. Um, all righty, so um, I'm going to give you the updates that we've got to give you for stuff that's been going on. Um, recent fixes that we've been working on, uh, the data feeds uh, API broke recently. I don't know if any of y'all were affected, but um, we've been doing some internal infrastructure updating and uh, a couple of pieces broke and, and that is uh, fixed and corrected. Um, in a similar vein, population counts uh, broke on the viewer destination guide, and those are also plumbed back together. Um, we've been updating our uh, our data warehousing and uh, internally, and that broke a couple of connections. So those are fixed. Hopefully, should stay fixed. Let us know if they don't stay fixed, but. Uh, we, we expect them to stay fixed this time. And we've been working on multi-factor authentication. We're going to be adding it in front of more of the web properties. So pretty much everywhere that you would log in to Second Life Web is going to get the MFA turned on for it. Uh, we expect that to ship sometime in Q4 of this year. Um, so that should be an added layer of security to enhance the protection of your accounts. And we'll give you more details when we're pretty sure when that's going to ship, but uh, we're hoping any time now. Uh, I'm sure that you've all noticed some UI updates. Uh, I think Somebody even, yeah, Rocky even mentioned them in chat. Um, we've been doing a lot of changes to the marketplace. We are working on making the marketplace product pages responsive, and that involves changing out a lot of components of the marketplace. Um, so V1 of the mobile-friendly marketplace product pages will, um, are, we're hoping for the, by the end of this month uh, to get that totally shipped, but you've already seen some of it. So um, we've heard some feedback about that, but how are y'all feeling about the changes to marketplace so far?
I don't think we've made an official announcement about it yet, Sassy. I think that we'll probably get to that as uh, we get towards the final stages. Right now, the page is still locked at the large screen aspect ratio. And uh, I think we'll probably make the announcement when the page can actually work on mobile. There is no news on marketplace listing variants. Um, we still want to do that. We've still got designs for it. Um, but it's, well, I mean, it's definitely not happening this calendar year. Um, but everybody knows that y'all want it. We know you want it. We want it. I'm sorry. I like that you've given us the uh, aqua blue. And I really like that the language is now in the same place as all the other things because quite often you'd end up in a different language and not know where that was. Um, but the my store being nested under my marketplace is a little bit extra clicky. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we're trying to get um, more of the UI elements to be consistent across our web properties. And uh, putting the languages in the same place as everywhere else is a step in that direction. But my store being nested, um, being extra click clicky is good feedback, and I'll take that back to the designers. Yeah, it just seems like everything that's under the My Marketplace arrow, Merchant Home, Manager Home, My Store, My Favorites, My Wish List could just be below the language, like the menu could just keep going. Um, um, kind of like the menus in the top of our viewer, how you can sort of cut them off if you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely take that uh, idea back to design. I know that we've been trying to make enough changes to make it usable and more modern looking, but not too many changes all at the same time. But some of the things that we have nested under my marketplace are frustrating. So. Thank you. I know the orange has freaked people out. I was wondering if there's any chance that you would ever consider letting people choose their own or choose from a selection of button colors instead of just the garish orange. Um, we'll take that again back to product and design. Um, I'm not going to rule anything out, but I'm not going to promise either. Um, and there's probably, it, it might tweak a little bit um, as well. I think that the orange is based on the old orange, but it had a gradient on it before. So with it all being one color and not like broken up with the gradient, it, it is probably a little bit different. Seasonal at the moment, at least. It is. I just kind of wonder about colors like that with colorblind people. Um, quite often that's a very big deal in SL, especially with HUDs and things like that. Worry what cannot be seen as being an important standout feature based on whether people can actually read it visually. In my first life, one of my friends at another company is really, really big into accessibility, and she's got me testing out different accessibility testing features. I don't know if I've turned one of those on the marketplace, but I might have to do that. I think people are just happy things are happening, so yay, team. I'm glad that y'all are happy, and we like having things happen. Uh, well, most of our web properties are 
hopefully going to move towards a dark mode for most of the stuff, but it's going to be a while on Marketplace, Jenna. Um, I think, but we're generally consolidating towards kind of a, a dark mode. If you want to look at the Linden Home Store, that's a direction that we're slowly trying to move everything. Um, uh, speaking of trying to move everything in a consistent direction, uh, we are working on some additional element refreshes of other web properties. The logged in homepage, the, the dashboard and the accounts pages are going to get a little bit of TLC. Um, pretty soon, and more impactfully, there's going to be a responsive, mobile-friendly dark mode for the download and the login pages coming sometime in Q4 as well. Um, is that going to, are we going to get rid of the motion sickness um, screen on the website? Sorry, that, that roller coaster and everything is just, mm. On the homepage, on the login yeah. homepage, uh, in I the will... not marketplace, the sl.com page, the mm -hmm. that video, it's 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 great visually for people to choose to look at, but I can't get off it fast enough because I suffer motion sickness really bad, and uh, it's affecting other people too. It's it's really hard to um, go there. I think that's excellent feedback. I'll take that to um, the designers on the team that owns that page. Interestingly, uh, this set of developers doesn't own that page, but yeah, that uh, but it's making people ill to look at is great feedback. <laughs> Not good for us, but uh, good feedback. Does that mean that you are or are not part of the join SL web page parts to sorry we can definitely take feedback on those pages uh, yeah what what have you got about the join flow <laughs> brace yourself oh boy. okay okay um, for a start it's been moved but um, I think that, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I just don't want to come down on you like a bag of hammers. So uh, you join SL and the username, there is, there is absolutely nothing on this page that lets anybody know what the username is going to be, as in how impactful it is on your second life. It doesn't say that this is going to be what is above your head for the rest of your days. It doesn't say that it's going to be tied to your character, your personality, your how you interact with people in the future. It doesn't say that it's your legitimate name. A lot of people come from MMOs where a username is just something that's on the back end and then when they make a character a character, they get to choose what they want to have. Um, I've been making a list, uh, I know this, <laughs> this sounds horrible, I'm going to actually paste this to your IM if that's okay, because it's that bad, um, of the, the names that are coming through the welcome hub lately, because people don't realise this is permanent. Um, and these are names you, you just you can't address people as these names, like you can't, there's nothing you can call them that's not offensive or just impossible, it's not a name. They're just throwing things in, in a box to get to the next stage and I think it's really unfair. My partner actually says that the Linden last names is now, um, you've monetized regret. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just funny. Um, I feel like that there just should be information that says this will be your name. Um, I've also had people that have come into the Welcome Hub that have realised the name above their head is their personal information because they didn't know what it was and wow. absolutely freaked out. And I've had to go into IM. I, I don't really care if I get fired as a mentor for this one, but I've said to them, make another account or contact a ticket, like submit a ticket and speak to somebody because this guy freaked like he had his real name and his year of birth, like all all sorts of password information. Like, do you know what I mean? It was just right. too personal. Um, and and even the password section on this page, it doesn't ask you to submit it twice. So if you do a typo and you're not paying attention, then you're locked out of your own account that's brand new. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a bad page. It's also been moved. It was Senra then the page, so it sort of was like you made your character, you were sort of like invested, and then you made up your name, and now it's the name before you get to the Senra. So I don't know what changed there in the last couple of months, because I know specifically because I was actually thinking, oh, that's really smart to make your character first, but it's been swapped. Okay, I wasn't imagining that. <laughs> Yeah, so both versions were running as an experiment and uh, what we're currently doing, I'm not sure right now what we're doing, but uh, certainly when we set it to a specific flow, it's because that was reflected in the no conversion numbers that we got for that version. Okay. Um, is there, like, is there a way you can just put, the, like, I mean, of course there's a way, but do you see what I mean about there needing to be some kind of descriptor? Like, I'm just so grateful that, you know, originally I was gunning for S-A-S-S-Y when I created Sassy Scarborough, and it wouldn't take because I think there was a lockdown on having a S in your name back when I joined, um, which mm -hmm. I'm grateful for because I deal with wigs for kids, you know, every year. Um, I think everybody deserves that opportunity to not have a name that's just I mean if you want to have a name that's gross and you want to have a name that's crazy that's fine I have no problem with that but some of these names that are coming through I just don't believe that they're doing it intentionally because they know it's going to be their name yeah I I think that that's um, a really good point um, we could definitely call that out a bit better, uh, and I will absolutely pass that along. Um, sometimes we have that with people who are joining the lab. They don't realize that they're really going to get called whatever they pick as their Linda name. That I don't know if I don't know how well it's explained uh, when people are joining, but. Uh, Hopefully the hiring manager explains it pretty well on the inside. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it's your name. Even even just showing a picture with the username showing over the top of people's heads. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. No, that's that's great feedback. Thank you. <laughs> um, speaking of other feedback, uh, if we can, if people have more things about JoinFlow, I'm totally cool to keep talking about JoinFlow, but I, I do have a couple of questions Syntax wanted me to ask y'all. All right. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of categories in the marketplace, but we've got additional categories that we would like to put into the marketplace. Uh, one of the ones that's been suggested is the category for dinkies, which are um, like small furries, uh, but it's also a brand name. So 
what are your what are your thoughts on should we have a a dinky category or a tiny category or um the hair consistent? category because it's nested again and people don't know to look for it in avatar accessories hair it's yeah i think the whole listings should be categories should be um looked back over all for dinkies you're a yes on dinkies and it doesn't yes on, as long as the dinky creator is okay with you you putting it in as a category is it weird that it's a brand name and it would get its own category and I see what you're saying there because then that would open it up to why doesn't eBody have a category why doesn't legacy have a category so but I think mm, I just think the categories list overall needs to be overhauled Okay. Yeah, it's it's a valid <laughs> ask because putting it out there would have been wild because you would get the throwback. Um, yeah, we've got some thoughts about some category changes and overhauls, but um, please put hair somewhere less hidden. I, I've taken that note. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I tell people at the at the hub don't buy everything because you might spend the rest of your second life as a slice of pie. So and that would be great if you did. So um, it would be a bit. I guess it would be weird to have just a dinky category and not a height challenged <laughs> non-human category. <laughs> Yeah. Small avatar. Small avatar. I mean, it could be a way of getting around that. Okay. Because you've also got the hamsters. They'll want a category. I'm, I'm hearing lots of subcategories under small avatars. All right. right. That's what I think is, yeah, I think that that's, you've got hamsters, you've got dinkies, you've got tinies themselves. Then there was, uh, then you've got little, little miniature phase was a different version than tinies, I think. Yeah, there you go. And then you've got the macros, which is the other direction. Okay. Oh, the baby dragons from where what those they were adorable. I have got the whole gamut of sizes of dragons in my avatar collections. Uh, cool. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, all right, so if you were going to flag an item on the marketplace, but you went to look at the flag reasons and none of them quite fit, what are some of the reasons that you might want to flag an item on the marketplace, but that uh, there's not a good reason to flag right now? Have you all Custom experienced that? Custom support's already been provided. Customer support is already being provided is one of the ways, reasons? Absolutely. My years of doing customer support in SL, the amount of reviews that have been horrible, you've dealt with the matter, you've even had a good outcome in the matter as in turns the customer around completely because they've misunderstood something, etc. And, the, and then the review stays there. They don't remove it. And... Uh, shouldn't be that way or 
you've done your best, you haven't turned them around, but they still want to viciously attack, it should be possible that, that you're letting them know that there's been support your end, they're just unwilling to budge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other marketplace item or comment or store flags that the rest of you all have wished that you could use? Or other ones that Sassy has found? The shadow skill one star with a dot or the uh, supports already being provided? Which one is the most important, Luke? I think it would be really helpful if you created some kind of a what the stars mean um, option. So you mm -hmm. actually did a, like a three is uh, good, uh, four is above average, five is this product blew my mind, <laughs> two is not exactly what I thought, and one is, you know, the this is not what I paid for, blah, blah, blah. Um, because some people actually get their knickers in a twist um, because they get a four star, because they believe they're owed a five star. And that's not how people operate. That's not how people rate things. Some people actually do think that four stars is a great review. They're not willing to give five stars because five stars means a whole different thing in their belief system. Yeah, it's like that Black Mirror episode. Haven't seen it. Thunder, you're saying that people leave bad reviews of products because they got kicked out of a group? <laughs> people leave reviews for any sorts of reasons it's kind of funny they just latch onto something that they got from that store at one time and throw a whole lot of things in there I think some of the options, especially the one about uh, this is my, you know, like the DMCA one, I think that that's a little uh, difficult. Like sometimes the original person is, the infringes my intellectual property rights. Sometimes that person's gone, but 500 people know it's their product that's now being sold by somebody else. Um, it shouldn't, there should be an extra one in there that this is, um, <clears throat> this is somebody else's item. Okay, yeah. That's a, that's and, a good and one. And maybe, yeah, and maybe possibly a, a, a position, like a, a place we could link 
the item to, like to help you out when you're looking at it. So, because sometimes thieves are just really lazy. Um, when I used to actually do DMCA's for brands, I would encounter things that said still the the actual product name, the original thing they stole it from. Some even walking around with demo still in the word. Uh, that's a great uh, flag option, and I have definitely added that to the notes. Incentives to send reviews, like, you can get my store's three stars face tattoo if you leave your comment or, you know, whatever your thing is, I don't know. Some stores already do that with bots. As soon as you buy a purchase, they get, yeah. Some actually hate that people do do that. They offer you even refunds of, you know, 25% or something. If you review it, then that becomes unfair to the person looking at reviews. Pantera, about the um, related items, I am not making any promises, but I think that one of my developers is actually working on making some of those related items thumbnails a little bit bigger. So uh, review incentives and or auto reminders. Um, which ones are y'all more excited about? Auto reminders that don't actually do reminders. incentives? Yeah, reminders would be great. I've actually used that for customer service too, by the way, just um, in case <laughs> it matters to anybody. When somebody claims to have purchased something before you all did the re-delivery, options on marketplace when somebody had bought something but we couldn't find any record of it existing I got them to review the product even if they did just say here <laughs> just so I knew that they actually purchased it because they wouldn't mm -hmm. have the option to review it otherwise so it made customer service possible well that's an interesting uh, thing that's cool um, so speaking of the like one star reviews that don't say why, um, is leaving reviews with just stars on it okay? Uh, right now we require text when you put a star on. Talked about that before, that it shouldn't be compulsory because some people just don't like that. Not everybody's chatty sassy, right, Rocky? But even we used to find that really hard as bloggers to review products because it was like, I know this is weird, but it was like endorsing the product if you left a review for the product, but the product deserved the stars. I agree, Shadow. I think I'd run through everything I've ever bought and give it star ratings 
if I didn't have to actually write stuff. We actually spoke about that once before too, Kelly, in a meeting about uh, tying in the reviews to make it like sort of Yelp. So if Luke left a review for Thunder's product and I realized, hey, I see Luke reviewing quite often, I could press Luke and it would show me everything he's reviewed and then I could value him as a good review person and be interested in products he's reviewed because I believe that he's telling the truth. And then people could actually look at, I think so, I'm, I'm not really, I think, yeah, like, yeah, we've talked about it before as being this way of sort of like an inner social sort of market where you kind of look towards like-minded individuals or you realize that they seem to like fantasy stuff like you do, like Fang does, you know, she loves attachments that are awesome when you're AFK and things like that. So I could look at her reviews and get some shopping under my belt. Mm -hmm. And then sort of look to it towards a sort of an extra set of eyes on products. Okay. Community review of other reviewers so that you can see what they're liking, but also so that they can kind of get social points for being a good reviewer. Right. So you'd sort of see that, yeah, you'd sort of see that Luke gave this a five-star review, but then you it could also weed out the whole idea of people that are giving themselves five-star reviews with alts because you would see that the only thing this person has ever reviewed is 50 of one brand. That's highly unlikely. So you might sort of think that hmm, something shenanigans -y is going on there. Shenanigans, yeah. Uh, I wonder. Um, cool. Do any of you watch um, YouTube makers? There's a Morgan Donner made shenanigan pants, and I love them. And I haven't looked in the marketplace for shenanigan pants, but I need to now. I used to love that Pantera. <laughs> when we used to have the rating system in World, I would love it because I would have a customer like I am me after they'd left the store and they'd say, I didn't have enough money to tip you. Not that I took tips, but I, and then they'd say, but I did give you a rating bump thing. And I'd be like, oh. Yeah, it was really adorable. It was like 15 linden or something to do it. But then you'd also see, it used to show how many people had given. And I once came across some guy that had given out like 3,000 of them or something. Whoa. Yeah, it was bizarre. <laughs> hey, Pantera, it sounds like you have a cautionary tale about rating profiles. I'm curious. I think people used to give it a little bit more credit than it deserved, sort of like a well-known store would have a lot of them because all the customers would give them that bump so then if a, a, a store that didn't have that kind of fan base, people started shopping in stores where the profiles of the owner had a bigger seeming bump kind of thing. Mm-hmm.
yeah, Pantera deserves a lot of those. Um, I have another web user group meta question for y'all. Um, we want to keep this time, which has been our time since forever, uh, but we are also interested in maybe adding a second web user group time. And I know we've talked about this a few different times, but if we added a second web user group time, like maybe halfway through the month or something, what would be a great time for y'all. Act on to the CCUG. I think that you need to combine it. I think that the second web user group meeting needs to be after the CCUG meeting, one of their meetings, so that it becomes a two a two hour content user creators meeting because the people that go to that meeting don't always come to this meeting because they don't realize that this meeting is often content user, content creator focused. And Veer even said that he loved that idea too, that he would like really like that overflow. So you're saying that Veer would run into my time? I don't, I don't know how I feel about no, that. No, no, no. I mean, you, okay. Well, no, <laughs> he wouldn't run into it. It would just be that the meeting would pick up where he left off. So like Garfield sometimes attends the CCUG meetings. So mm -hmm. when marketplace stuff comes up, it turns into a web, a, you know, a semi web user group meeting. And it mm -hmm. seems like all the people at that meeting have the kind of input that would be great for this meeting. And so if the second meeting of the web user group was actually after that one, that you'd probably have more likely more people would stay from the other one and join the people from this one and it would become a bigger meeting. It, the ones that want to stay could stay and it could become something bigger. <laughs> Rocky, you, you have feelings after my own heart, but it also sounds like it could be useful for people. Um, I've got some questions from the YouTube stream. Can we maybe eventually have a system where items bought in world and are available in marketplace can be reviewed if purchased in world? This is, uh, we are actually talking through what that would look like with um, Casper Vend and Marketplace, that you as a merchant could uh, manage both of your sets of products in one place and as a consumer would be able to look at your purchases from in-world Casper stuff and from Marketplace in the same place. Um, I don't know how soon we're going to be able to get to that, but something we've definitely been uh, working through as we are slowly bringing Casper Tech into the fold. I think that there'd be a way to automatically create a button on the top, of, I just thought of this now, on the top of the marketplace store of anybody that's using Casper Venn system, that when they click, the customer clicks that button, it sends them the redelivery HUD in world so that all of that stuff would be on their screen anyway, because stores have to create those and it seems like you could make what them. If, what tell. if the stores didn't have to create those? What if Casper Venn right. delivered through the same mechanisms and you could just do it through your marketplace interface? That you? <laughs> well, something. <laughs> You're already doing that, aren't you? I can neither confirm nor deny at this time. But but you get what I mean? Like a, a but yeah. So yeah, there, you already thunk it. <laughs> I, um, we've actually talked about this at the CCUG as well, but seeing it's in your purview, I think too, um, abolishing 1L uh, demos um, as being a need 
because the old way was people used to use marketplace when it was X Street, etc., to grief people with zero mm -hmm. linden purchases. Uh, we've all grown up now. We have wrinkles. It's not necessary. Um, you know, and plus you've got the capping thing and, and it's easier to report people and et cetera, et cetera. But you've got people that still look at people that charge one hour as being greedy and you can't gift to your alt or log in, uh, or without logging into the other account if you want to get a demo because you can't pass zero L items. Uh, can we just get rid of it? Because it sounds like you're saying both prevent. directions that uh, not. Um, can you say that use again? It for data. Words? Sorry, <laughs> they use the one L transactions for data in Casper Vend, for instance. You can't oh. you can't see zero L transactions in vendor scripted items, but you've also got people that are old school that if you if you make it 1L, then people were less likely to do evil things like review it just for the sake of it, etc. But also, you can't send a 0L item to, you can't gift it. So you love something and you're signed into Kali, but you want to send it to your alt. And you can't because it's 0L. It has to be 1L to send it. So you've got to sign out of Kali, log into the alt, and then buy it like that, et cetera, et cetera. So people use the excuse that people want to gift it, which is true. They want to send it to their altar, they send it to a friend or et cetera, but they can't because it's zero L. So can you just make it possible to give zero L? You know, we do keep talking about the zero L used for griefing, uh, but if we could test it out about gifting 0L, we could track it for a little while and see if griefing did increase, uh, then I guess we'd have data around it. Yeah, because it's not like you don't know who griefed. It's not like all the records wouldn't be there that somebody was being a meanie pants and sent you all a lot of crap. And then you just lock them out of their cell or send them to the cornfield. There you go, Tiger, you're a genius. Yeah, just cap zero L transactions. Hmm. Okay, we can look into that. Uh, we've definitely talked about it internally a few times. I know y'all have asked, um, but uh, we'll need to check the data. It's it's a it's a lot of the way SL works, you know. Or it's not even just your alts. It's you you're looking at thing and you think, oh my gosh, she would love this, but I don't necessarily want to buy it for her. I just want to show her that it exists rather than linking it to the friend or etc. And it's just a whole behind the scenes way people operate with things. So. Um, or your work account, things like that. You want to send the demo so you can look at things later, etc. But the other thing is that people use the 1L also as a way to track things with vending systems because you can't register the 0L transactions. And I still don't know why that's a thing. For all I mean. Um, yeah, definitely can look into that. Uh, and then we've got another question comment from YouTube about having an official marketplace API. Um, we have done some development designs, some architectural designs for what that would look like. Um, 
it's something that we would like internally as well. Uh, but because Marketplace has existed since the X Street days, it's not as easy as just creating a, an API uh, from whole cloth, as it were. So um, it's something we're interested in, something that we've looked at, something that we're going to keep looking at. Uh, there are a few non-marketplace related technical hurdles I would like to get through before we go too far down that path. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think more APIs and more ability for Second Life users and creators to interact in an API-driven way could be really useful. that you'll find there's also still a lot of vendors out there that use scripted systems, not just Caspervent, that actually don't realize they can link it into their marketplace and have that all combined. Seeing that in forums or just social media where somebody mentions something and you realize they're not using that power and that's a real shame. Mm -hmm. I feel like Casper Vend is not doing enough on Marketplace to make it aware of its presence there too. We're working on it, I promise. Is there <laughs> any any chance that we could have a a, a monthly Casper Vend meeting, saying that it's yours now? I mean, um, we could actually do it at this meeting. Uh, I. We could do it at this meeting. Uh, I'm not really ready to do that today, but we could give a Casper Vend update next month. That would be fantastic because there's things, because recently, when when was management added? Because I feel like I had brain damage the other week. Somebody mentioned it on Facebook and I was like, oh, yay, and then went to put it in and realize my partner was already in there because I'd already done it because it wasn't new. <laughs> I was having a moment. So I, I feel like not enough announcements are made when you, you do things that are changes to Casper Vend. That is uh, fair and valid and interesting. Yeah, we, um, I think it was earlier this year that management for Casper right. Vend was added. <laughs> Right, and I couldn't find anything, but I, I, like I said, I thought, I believed the hype, you know, oh, this is new, I just saw it, and I'm like, oh, goodness, good, that's great, and went and was like, hold on, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've already done this because I already know that it happened, so that's a whole, you know, half a year of information that's not been shared with, with users. Pantera. the function. Yeah. Um, over on uh, other APIs I've worked with in the past, based on what the request was, we could return this response in JSON or in XML. Um, it makes the code a little bit trickier to wrap it, but um, I, generally speaking, would rather just do JSON as well. Oh, I have a request too for Marketplace. I thought of the other day. I I strongly believe this used to be a thing and now it doesn't seem to be there or again, I'm having a, a moment. Um, new listings on Marketplace. There should be a button that we could click that shows us everything that's just been added to Marketplace. Um, and I really feel like there used to be one of those because you would click it and you'd see a new collar was listed in 48 colors, so you'd just be scrolling for pages. <laughs> so, um, like, I feel I've had that moment, so maybe it was OnRes that had that, I don't remember now. 
Uh, I mean, there is a sort option for new right. items. But that's in that category. I'm just talking about being that crazy need for shopping just for a thrill and just clicking new items listed and finding out that, you know, Thunder's just added a new HUD for, you know, inventory sorting or something. Or, you know, Garfield's got lasagna pictures up. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily something I would look for, but I want to know that he did it and then get all excited with him. Well, and I think we've got the the favorite stores page, but it, again, y'all mentioned that there are some things that are buried. And if there were a way to subscribe to that favorite stores page to see the like newest items that your favorite stores had put out, that would be great based on what I've heard y'all ask for before. Yeah, recently added would be amazing because, yeah, some people, like I, I really like the what are people buying now because it is this random scattering of items and you just go, oh, look at that. I never saw that was released by one of 64,000 stores that there are here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Shadow, there is going to be more width added to the marketplace, uh, at least the product pages for now, uh, but it's not going to go all the way horizontal for ultra wide, but it is going to be wider than it is now. Um, I love that about? idea category for, I mean, demo. If you had a slot that you could just drag the demo into and ta that's where the demo comes from. I, I need to, has there been any talks about demos and a way to directly assign a demo to a product without the need to create a whole product for them? Oh, um, yeah, sort of. So um, whenever we can finally get around to doing something like variants or we sometimes call it styles, uh, you could have, you know, like Sassy's crop top there. You could have one listing for that crop top and then you could have it in all of the colors uh, as different images on that one product plus a demo one plus the fat pack all in one product listing. It is not coming soon. Um, it's that not coming this calendar year, but it is a thing that we have designs for and things that we are thinking about and would like to get back to. The, um, there's, uh, Crixus, I hope I said that right, is asking about um, a listing date of items. This comes up in this group meeting quite often. It and does. there's like pros and cons because it's kind of funny how it it can go by both ways. Mm -hmm. Um, about how like we do want that because we do see customers getting very confused because if you're only even if you're not just a new resident, you could be just four years old and not know a world of sculpts and see a picture and that bikini looks really good, and but then suddenly you've got you know, a, a mixture of bomb system layers and 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 sculpty pieces making up the ribbons on your shoulders and things like that, and just scream in horror. And also, the creator's long gone. So, a timeline, you know, if it's made prior to November 2011, you know, it's not mesh, etc. But that mm -hmm. being said, that would lose a lot of people buying items that are older just because of some sort of belief system that anything older than that is not as good, which is not true. So it has pros and cons. Well, and if it's a listing date, then, uh, you know, if it unlists and relists, it'll get an updated date. That could become a flaggable right too.
great. So it could be an interesting category. Look for everything between 2006 and 2011 and know that you're going to get bomb layers galore. I mean, that's how I beta tested when bomb was coming was to run around marketplace and find as many older creators that I knew that were system layer creators. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, something in the date range would be good because it would help people sort of understand. But it it might create a bias, but I think at least it's something. Yeah, uh, some kind of date ranges and being able to filter by... I'd like the filtering to like be a little more modern in marketplace in general. Um, well, we are at about the end of our time today. Do we have any last minute super super important queries before we wrap up? Thank you, Rocky, and Sassy, and Pantera, and everybody. Thanks for live streaming us this time, Strawberry. There's a whole calendar amethyst of the different meetings that you can get to follow along. They're great meetings. There's another one tomorrow for the CCUG. Barry will be streaming that too, I think. Also Pantera's YouTube page, if you go to that, she's got all the older meetings too. You can catch up. <laughs> 